everybody. I'm Hillary Atkin from the Atkin Report, and I am delighted to welcome Anna Lee Strecken, producer of Riveted on PBS's American Experience, to this edition of Hillary's Happy Hour. Anna Lee, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you, Hillary? Really good. I'm so happy to have you. And I'm wearing a jeans jacket in honor of your show, which premieres February. <laughs> February 7th, um, and it's pointed out at the very beginning of it that probably right now half the planet is wearing jeans, but what was your inspiration in pursuing this fascinating history? <laughs> Just that very phenomenon, really. I mean, the fact that you can go anywhere on the planet at any given moment, even in tropical places, I mean, people wearing denim. I mean, I, for one, don't think denim itself is like the most comfortable thing you can wear. I mean, it's a little constricting. It's kind of heavy, you know, it's a little bit hot and, you know, I don't know. It's just I, mystified. Like, why is this thing so everywhere? And also I knew that it had some like American, you know, connotations. Like people think it's like this American thing with like cowboys and stuff, but I just want to know the answer. Where did it come from? Well, I think if you ask most people, they would say, oh, Levi Strauss invented blue jeans, but viewers will be very surprised with what is revealed. So let's take a look at the trailer. Blue jeans are the symbol of our pioneering spirit. It goes right back to the beginning of America. You don't really stop and think about why half the population of the planet is wearing them on any given day. We just are. Jeans are the quintessential American garment. But it's always the same story. It's about the cowboys in the West. It's about Levi Strauss and the, the gold rush. And yet so much of the story we tell about jeans is a myth. <laughs> like any other good product of America, we borrow all the best ideas from everywhere. Back in the 19th century, denim really dominated. Basically, any type of labor, you would have found people wearing denim. And then, around World War II, denim was changing. It gave women the ability to move more freely, and perhaps also to rethink their position in American society. It undermined the idea of what fashion was supposed to be. All of a sudden, everyone wanted to wear them. People know that when they wear them, they look cool. For African Americans, a pair of designer jeans came with a lot of value. Hip hop really helped to take command of the denim narrative. You'd have to look far and wide to find an American of any age who has never worn blue jeans. Jeans are probably the single most iconic garment of the 20th century. They are universal and individual at the same time. In the history of clothing, there is nothing like that. It turns out the common story about jeans is clearly a myth, but talk to us about that and the evolution of jeans in fashion, especially in recent decades, where it seems as if each generation tries to make them their own look. Yeah, I mean, I think the story of jeans is just fascinating. It's, it's so much more than what people think of when they think of jeans. They think it's Levi Strauss, maybe they think of cowboys, maybe they think of Marlon Brando, and like Marilyn Monroe, maybe, but that's about it. I mean, it's 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 traditionally, without even thinking about it much, we're telling a largely white male story um, without thinking too much. And there's actually a lot more to it. I mean, women are part of this story. African Americans are part of this story. There's so much, so much more. And I mean, if you want to talk about recent decades too, I mean, the fashionization of jeans, I think, is is a fascinating story just in and of, of itself. We tend to think of fashion the way we think with, with catwalks and you know big designers. That's a kind of a phenomenon of the 70s. Um, and but going back even further, you know, jeans were in the 30s, I mean, purely workwear. I mean, this was something that came to represent like the American working class. Like in the Depression, it was this serviceable garment that everyone who worked with their hands wore. I mean, it was cheap, it could it could last forever just with a few mendings. The rivets were really a game changer. Um, and that's the thing that, you know, Levi Strauss and Jacob Davis, the man who came up with the rivets, should be remembered for. Because the pants, actually, as we find out, existed long ago before Levi Strauss came along. They were around for decades. The rivets, though, were, in fact, a big deal. 
Well, I thought it was so fascinating that at the very beginning, jeans didn't have pockets, they didn't have belt loops. And as you pointed out, they didn't have rivets. So mm -hmm. tell us how did jeans evolve and get their signature look? <laughs> well, it depends on how far back you wanna go <laughs> as we found out in our research. Um, the garment that we tend to think of as jeans, this sort of like heavier cotton twill, like with the rivets specifically, I mean, that is the Levi Strauss Jacob Davis invention that was in the 1890s um, that was patented. But if you actually look and start thinking about, well, what about pants made of denim? That goes back decades before that. If you start thinking about the cloth or workwear that was sort of like a heavier workwear that was in that twill weave, it goes hundreds of years back further than that. And what about being dyed blue? You know, indigo is something that goes back to antiquity. Um, and the cultures of, of West Africa in particular were the ones that really knew how to grow the indigo crop, dye using this very special, very difficult plant to work with. Um, and that's some, you know, pieces of the story that we now include in the narrative that hasn't traditionally been told. That, yeah, that was a fascinating part of the story. Why are most genes blue? And, and, and the answer was indigo. Like, why couldn't they have, but as it's pointed out, I think viewers will find this fascinating. Indigo, when the dye is mixed, is actually green. And you show that in the documentary. But mm -hmm. what other fascinating things did you discover in the course of making this? <laughs> well, with regard to blue or just overall? Just well, overalls, actually, yeah. like everybody used to wear overalls. Who knew that, you know? But I, yeah. as far as just the garment itself, how it's made and how it's evolved to its place in in culture across across the world. Yeah. I mean, isn't it funny that, um, I mean, I think it wasn't until the 50s that Levi's started actually calling them jeans. I mean, they were called waist overalls, you know, for decades. And that goes back to the fact that you know, these early workers, you know, miners, you know, farmers, they wore overalls. And so if they wore, you know, if they take the straps off or they wore the versions that didn't have the straps, they just call them waist overalls. And so that's what they were called, you know, for a really long time. And, you know, the evolution of jeans, you can look, there's so many things about it that we kind of take for granted today, you know, like the zipper, you know, um, used to be a button fly. Um, there didn't used to be two back pockets. There was just one. Um, you know, the five pocket design we know now, I mean, that's more of like a recent, a recent thing, but it's definitely become universal. What about the little tiny pocket that's kind of signature to most the jeans? Style? You know, I don't remember when that came out, but I remember it's, it's older than, it's older than we think. It's like, it's been around for a while. Yeah. Well, jeans are pretty indestructible. I, I think we all have pairs in our closets from you know, a long time ago, they hold up really well. But what's also fascinating is the way that everyone can personalize their jeans and how that's become a fashion statement, how jeans kind of evolved into, you know, signs of rebellious youth. And I think that's still part of our culture. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's amazing how jeans has sort of become this ubiquitous canvas that each one of us kind of writes our own you know, personal histories or how we see ourselves belonging in society. You know, we pick a certain kind of jeans that says, you know, where we fit in, even it may even be unconscious. I think one of the things that uh, inspired me when I was thinking about this film a lot is, um, you know, when I was younger, I used to kind of not exactly hide in my clothes, but I didn't want them to be, you know, too showy or, you know, say too many things that I wouldn't want to be misinterpreted. And I think a lot of people think about clothes that way. They don't, they don't want to like show off. And um, my grandmother was one who, my grandmother's from Puerto Rico. My, my mother's side is from Puerto Rico. And, you know, the culture is, you know, dressing up and dressing up to go out is a, is a very big thing. In particular for my grandma, she would like dress for the, dress to the nines, like every time she went out the door. And when she passed away, I, you know, started thinking about this more and about the language of clothing and how the choices we make about what we put on our bodies and what it says about us. Because clothing is really this invisible language. I think that, you know, we don't really talk about it so much, but it, it, they are, there are things that we say with what we put on that we may not even realize, you know, it says what groups, what groups we belong to or what we don't. Absolutely. I think jeans definitely make a statement. I know for me and probably many people during the pandemic, putting on a pair of jeans 
was actually dressing up. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. From the sweatpants everybody's wearing. It's definitely a step up. Mm -hmm. um, I have loved talking to you about this, Anna Lee. I want to wrap up our happy hour and propose a toast to you and the success of Riveted on PBS's American Experience. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Cheers. Cheers.